Science versus religion is a false dichotomy. In the book called The Future of Religion, the pragmatist atheist Richard Rorty, along with the Catholic philosopher Gianni Vatimo, discuss the science versus religion debate. In one section, another philosopher, Santiago Zabala, quotes the pragmatist philosopher John Dewey's claims about the topic. Dewey latter, uh, or sorry, Dewey argued that the democratic ideal can only be achieved if we surrender supernatural Christianity's division between morality and spirituality. So uh, John Dewey was a Christian, liberal, pragmatist philosopher, and he was basically advocating that Christianity, as he says, separate, surrender this division between morality and spirituality as if, uh, so basically that they're more of the sign of the same thing, like this false dichotomy between science and religion as we're going to get into here. Okay, so the future of religion is essentially, sorry, the future of religion essentially lies in a secular version of faith. Rorty and Vitimo react by saying that the advent of Christianity created two new cultures due, the, due to the quarrel between science and religion. The culture of the West separated into three different dichotomies, natural versus human science, atheism versus theism, and continental versus analytic philosophy. Philosophical theories such as, posit Rorty says, philosophical theories such as positivism or scientism you know, basically what Sam Harris believes, the worshipping of science, that it can tell you what is morally good and eventually solve all the problems. Um, philosophical theories such as positivism or scientism and Marxism are being dissolved in spite of their claims to a vanquished religion. During our current postmodern era of history, which is entirely different from postmodernism, we're just talking about the period of history after modernity, or at least between modernity and postmodernity. Um, during our current postmodern era of history, there are no more philosophical defenses for being either an anti-theist atheist or an anti-science theist. So an atheist who basically is a militant atheist like Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris, who thinks that no one should believe in any god, uh, or a theist who is like, you know, a stereotypical Christian fundamentalist who doesn't trust science and thinks that you should, you know, pray to God instead of going to the doctor and stupid shit like that. So there's no excuse for being an anti-theist atheist or an anti-theist an anti atheist or an anti-science theist. The deconstruction of the metaphysics of religion due to the, uh, in the postmodern era, has cleared the way for Western culture without false dualisms like that between science and religion. During this postmodern era, our minds are under the postmodern condition, which again, postmodern and the postmodern condition is different. It's a psychological condition, which is different from the postmodern era, era rather, which is a period of history, which is also different from postmodernism, which is a uh, field of thought and philosophy. That's as much as I'll get into it now. So during this postmodern era, our minds are under the postmodern condition, which means that the institutional structures of Western society, such as religion and science, are less important to most of us than they used to be. In this postmodern era and postmodern condition, faith is no longer based on Plato's image of a motionless God. The rebirth of religion in the 21st century is not made motivated by global threats like terrorism and planetary ecological catastrophe. Nietzsche's famous death of God is what led to the rebirth of a more secular religion in her postmodern era. Rorty and Vitimo interpret the de Nietzsche's death of God as the secularization of the sacred, which has been at the center of the development of the Western world. So, the decline of old-fashioned religion in Western society has oh, lost my, my play. oh the the decline of 
modern re religion in modern Western society has led to the secularization of religion. Obviously, this was a huge key aspect of both the Enlightenment and the modern era. This basically means that there's now absolutely nothing wrong with being religious without it interfering with science. There's also no more reason for there to be a conflict between a scientist and their religious beliefs. You can be a religious scientist without it having to be a problem, or you can be a Christian who is really pro-science. Both science and religion have pros and cons. They do not have to defeat each other. They can complement each other instead. Science versus religion is a false dichotomy.